So let's talk about the power of the green skins in this overhauled version of Warhammer 40k. Let's talk points changes, mission rules, and how the core rules affect the orcs with a faction overview in Arcs of Omen. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking green skins, and I thought it would be fun to take a focused look at the orcs in Arcs of Omen, talk about their points and the core rules changes and how they'll affect them, and also look over their mission secondaries and some overall takes. Broadly speaking, I think that the new update has brought some pretty good stuff for the green skins, so let's jump straight into it and talk orcs. First up, let's talk about the core rules changes and how they might affect the most competitive orc lists around. Obviously one of the biggest things in the new Arcs of Omen season is that each army is going to be building their forces around the Arcs of Omen detachment, and orcs being orcs they're not going to get any allies, it literally is just that. In general I can't see it making an enormous impact on the majority of orc lists, I feel like in general they weren't an army that took the bare minimum of troops, often taking a few decent squads of beast snagger boys or regular ones, plus some Gretchen. I guess actually having some more de-restricted troops options might actually mean that you see even more troops in orc lists, a few boys squads jumping out of wagons maybe, and then a very decent number of Gretchen to get to work on those secondary objectives and do the boring bits so the orcs can stick to crumping people. In general though, I'd broadly argue that it's a bit less restrictive than before, so if say that you wanted to go very heavy on heavy support with bunches of kill whip rigs and killer cans and things, or go heavy on fast attack with a bunch of death copters, squig hogs and war bikes, it's a bit easier too than it was. I think one other interesting thing for the detachment is that if you want to take multiple bosses, that heroic support option means that you could have two very fighty war bosses in the same list. You wouldn't need to shell out for another patrol or anything now, you could literally have two squigasaur bosses, or maybe a squigasaur boss and a war bike boss. Perhaps the only restriction compared with previously is that Gaz Golthracker is actually going to take up one of those war boss sections in your army list now, as it doesn't look like you can take a supreme command detachment alongside the Arcs of Omen one. It means that if you want Gazgul and he is a good choice, you would have to give up on one of those bosses. Another side effect of it just being the one detachment means that you're only going to be getting the one specialist mob, so for example you couldn't have two different units of truck boys and two different patrols, or say some horrible gets Gretchen and some truck boys in a different one. I guess a little bit unhelpful that that's going to be limited to just the one free upgrade selection. I'd say the same as before though, probably the truck boys and the horrible gits are the best, though there are some other pretty reasonable choices like the boom boys. Elsewhere in 40k, I feel like the removal of armor of contempt is going to be something else that helps the greenskins quite a bit. Choppers only have one AP, and that means that against Space Marines they feel kind of lackluster up to now. Space Marines will typically be saving on a 4 plus save against them rather than 3 plus, and Terminators in particular will be easier to kill, only saving on a 3 and not a 2 against the basic boys. I feel like that's going to be another point for wanting to run more regular boys squads, dropping out of transports and things, particularly in that buffed war option from Nephilim with the Goths. It definitely doesn't hurt on things like speed war shooters and things as well, so it won't be counteracting the AP-1 that you get. I think the free strategic reserves could be an interesting option for orcs as well. It's a free option that means that if you can't hide something, you could have it turning up on turn 2, and I think the orcs in particular are quite interested in that for the melee purposes of things, as they get to re-roll charges innately, so they've got a better chance than average of making that charge from 9 inches away. Plus if you happen to do it with a vehicle, then you can make a 3d6 inch charge with ramming speed, and with the re-roll that almost guarantees you a charge out of reserve, guaranteeing you a pretty nasty alpha strike. It does cost CP of course, but it'll cost less if you don't actually have to pay the command points to put the unit into strategic reserve in the first place. Perhaps one downside that I think is relevant to orcs is that flyers must start off the board now, aircraft have to go into strategic reserve and only turn up on turn 2, that will be relevant on the orcs as they have some strong flyers like the Dakar jet or the Wiles Bomb blaster jet. I think it does lessen their utility if you just can't swoop over to your opponent's deployment zone or guns blazing turn 1, that was pretty nice in things like freebooters where you could get the plus one to hit. Though I think with the strength of the data sheets, they're still not bad, but I feel like less people are going to take them than they were previously. Finally, I would bear in mind that orcs have lost some supplemental rules going into Arcs of Omen. Basically, a couple of their specialist attachments had their expiry date for January, and Games Workshop have confirmed that they're no longer going to be in official rules effect. The two special rule supplements are the Speed Mob and the Blood Axe Codex supplement. Speed mob in particular going I think is pretty sad, that was a fairly viable way to run a whole bunch of buggies if you wanted to do a Mad Max themed orcs army, and without that benefit it's just not going to be a strong run in another clan, the benefits were quite well tailored to them, making them both faster and tougher. Kind of sad for the death copters as well, they were quite nice with that attack out of the sun stratagem. The blood axe one being gone I think is a bit of a flavour loss as well, I feel like most of their rules weren't really particularly strong, 
Maybe my favourite was that surprise stratagem where if you charge the commandos, they could just get the jump on you instead. But I felt it did perhaps make the blood axes feel a bit more fluffy, having a bunch more complicated options compared with the other clans to wet their teeth on. In general, those make blood axes and the speed war type armies a bit less viable, so maybe don't do the best for internal codex balance in my opinion. Otherwise, the orcs have received a whole bunch of point changes, and fortunately all of them buffs. Going through them quickly, first up combi weapons have dropped down from 10 points down to 5 points for most units. The combi scorchers and the combi rockets I both think are pretty interesting with those kind of profiles. I feel like for that kind of points upgrade, I generally want to take them along, particularly when all they're going to be replacing is something like a custom slugger anyway. The orc boys have technically got a little bit better. They've got those discounted combi weapons for the knob, plus they can take three big shooters in the units for no additional cost. So that's a pretty direct upgrade there. And if you want to upgrade to a rocket launcher, it's an extra 5 points rather than 10. I think in general with them being so focused on melee though, I'd probably just take the big shooter and leave it at that. I'd say the knobs might be one of the units that have done best out of these points cost changes. They were a unit that I think were just lagging behind the boys in general. As the boys went down in points, they just seemed to outcompete the knobs quite a bit. I feel like they might have a bit more of a niche now, now they've got a bunch of free war gear. First up, big choppers and power stabbers are free across the unit, so you may as well load up on a bunch of big choppers for damage to attacks at the very least. I feel like those at 17 points are pretty scary, and they are at least a little bit more durable than boys as well with toughness 5 and a 4 plus save. The power claw and the kill saw are now both 5 points. I think they're reasonable enough for maybe 1 or 2 in the unit to help them deal with heavy armour, but in general I feel like the big choppers are maybe the more efficient option. The ammo runt is free, so you may as well take one and have him re-roll a combi weapon shot or something. It means that the first combi rocket that you're buying, I guess, is a bit better value. And just overall, I feel like these could be quite tempting, jumping out of battle wagons or trucks. Still a fairly cheap unit, and you could potentially use that truck boys upgrade on them to have them make some really long charges, if you prefer that to the objective secures. I still feel they're going to have pretty strong competition for boys, beast snagger boys, and mega knobs for that kind of role, but at least they're competing better now, rather than feeling kind of flatly behind. For other changes, we've got the Bront herd going down to 30 points from 35 if you were taking the grabber stick or the shock prod. For me, they're still kind of not good enough at that cost though. You're better off just getting more Gretchen, particularly as they're 4 points per model, and you can now absolutely spam out the troops' choices if you want to. Flash gits have improved a fair bit. They were considered one of the worst units in the codex, to the extent where they were voted highest in that vote I did recently for which units should get buffed, and Games Workshop have given them a pretty decent lift, going down from 25 points to 20, the most improved unit out of this update. I think they were pretty bad before though, so I'm not sure the lift has quite got them good enough to the extent where they're an auto-include unit or anything, probably just a bit more usable and mid-tier. I still think that the best thing about them is that stratagem, if you can trigger it, 2 CP to fire again and blast the enemy with another volley of snaz gun shots seems like the most efficient use of them, but that does require you not to need the CP for anything else. Overall, a very good change though, definitely going in the right direction, and they are quite cool models, so it's nice to have an excuse to put them on the board if you own them. I feel like the other big winner from the points changes section are the killer cans though. They've dropped down to 30 points from 35, that's quite a nice points drop at minus 14%, and they are looking like an efficient little unit now, putting a whole ton of ramshackle wounds on the board for quite cheap cost. Some people were already running these guys in competitive lists, and now I feel that quite a lot more might, probably in small numbers still due to morale and everything, but just having a squad of these on the board is fairly threatening both at range and in melee, and perhaps most of all toughness, with it soaking up a lot of firepower more than you'd expect, particularly if it's strength 7 or less. The rockets also went down from 15 points to 10 as well, so it's 40 points for a killer cam with a rocket, and their firepower isn't too terrible, particularly if you get the blast keyword off and you fire it into some medium infantry. I'd expect to see a fair few people more running those in the list, as just a bit of a durable distraction carnifex that's just a little bit too threatening to completely ignore. Otherwise, the last change are to Gorkonauts and Morkonauts, both of them went down 35 points, the Gorgonauts to 330 and the Morkonaut to 315 without the force field. Overall though, I would argue that's just not quite enough of a points drop to get properly good. They do bring a fair bit of raw might to the board. They basically feel like they've got the profiles of a kind of slightly underwhelming knight. I feel like to be one of the standout units in the Orc book though, they would have to go down a little bit more than this. I guess at least the super heavy rules have changed a bit to make them a bit more tempting. They will be able to get clan cultures and things now, so I guess that's something. They'll be a bit fightier in melee with goths, for example, or be able to shoot a bit straighter in freebooters. 
I do think it's a bit of an odd choice that they went down, but the Stomper didn't, though. If it kind of felt similarly bad before, I felt like the Stomper could have easily dropped a fair bit. Overall, out of these, I feel like the boys' big shooters all be helpful enough. Probably the Nobs and the Killer Cans are the biggest winners in terms of units that have got more usable, and it's nice that Games Workshop should have thrown the Flash Gits and the Gork and Mork and Bone. Definitely helps out a little bit of internal codex balance. Next up, we've got the new versions of the secondary objectives within the Warzone Arcs of Omen missions, and it seems that Gork is smiling down on the Orcs in terms of improvements to these, as in general, I would say that they're stronger than before. In the new missions, every faction has three objectives, and it does mean that a fair few of them have been scrubbed from existence. The Orcs have lost the biggest and the best, the one where you had to do things like kill things and stand on objectives with your boss. I feel like some Orc players might well miss that, it could actually rack up a fair amount of points against certain lists with a very fighty boss like a Squigasaur, perhaps. I feel like the ones that remain are a lot more reliably good, though. Green Tide is the Battlefield Supremacy one, where you've got to stand 10 or more models in each table quarter for a victory point each turn. This one seems to have got a bit easier to do, as you only have to have those units an extra 3 inches outside of each table quarter, whereas before I think it was 6 inches out of each table quarter, so it's a lot easier to get one unit in range of a table quarter than it was. Potentially feasible for a big mob with an advance to jump from one table quarter to the next, if you happen to roll okay. The other good one that got a bit better was Get the Good Bits. This one was really quite a common include for competitive orc lists. Basically do actions and midfield objectives, ideally with Gretchen, getting 4 victory points if you manage to do 1 action, or 6 victory points for doing 2. Previously it was 3 victory points and 5 victory points, so this one's got a fair bit better to be honest. I feel like a lot of orc lists are going to want to build towards this, and it seems like it's really incentivizing you putting multiple units of Gretchen in the force. They don't really cost that much at all, to be honest, when they're only 40 points for 10. It certainly feels like if you throw something around 30 or 50 Gretchen at the objectives and things, you're probably going to score fairly well while the Orcs get on with the serious business of killing the enemy. Otherwise, the Stomp Them Good one is still there. That one's basically killing more enemy units in melee than you lose Orc units. Handy enough against multiple small unit armies though I feel like it's a bit more of a niche and unreliable pick than some of them. In general, I'd be more looking to take other ones if the enemy army has some kill objectives. Overall though, I'd say that the future is looking pretty green for Orcs. Broadly, I think these changes help a lot more than they hurt them. No Armour of Contempt is going to be great for the choppers. Some really nice helpful points drops, killer cans and knobs being more takeable is nice. The secondary objectives pretty much got flat better, though I will admit there are some downsides as well. The flyers might be a bit less helpful, and losing speed mob and blood axe supplements won't be great for internal balance. I'd guess that after the changes, most people are probably going to still want to build around goths lists, things like wagons and kill rigs with boys in them, squigog boys and squigasaur bosses, commandos and storm boys perhaps, backed up by a few Gretchen, and maybe a bit of orky firepower, or perhaps Gazgul himself. I think the flies will still be usable, but taking quite a lot less. Multiple bosses seems pretty auto-include for one CP, either Gazgul or a second regular boss, and probably a few more killer cans and knobs about compared with before. Overall, broadly seems good, given that really quite a lot of armies got some pretty significant nerfs in this update. Hopefully orcs will be in a place to punch up with the big boys once again. So anyway, let me know your thoughts on the greenskin forces in Arcs of Omen. Are there any important things that you think I've missed with this? And what orky forces are you looking forward to putting on the board at the moment? I'll be aiming to make plenty more mini-faction overviews like this over the next day or so. Stay tuned if you'd like to see other factions' points changes covered, plus the new missions and things like that. If you haven't checked it out already though, feel free to take a look at the big Arcs of Omen overview that I did. We'll go through the balance data slate and the points updates and some FAQs. I'll link that in the video description. Finally, if you have been enjoying videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Auspex Tactics does have a Patreon page, and that's how I can afford to keep on making quite so many videos quite this regularly as my main thing. If you have been enjoying a lot, any support is enormously appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.